Hey, hey, hey everyone, Rosbowski here, and welcome to our first top 10 video for Five Nights at Freddy's 4. Today, and my very special guest, Tricky, we are going to be talking about our top 10 hopes and wishes for Five Nights at Freddy's 4. Hello everyone, this is Tricky Wee, but you could call me Tricky, and thank you for having me. Taking our number 10 spot is the return of the original animatronics. One of the many things that makes Five Nights at Freddy's such an interesting topic and video game series are the characters. The original animatronics have made such an impact because of their uniqueness, their designs, pretty much everything about them. But there's so many mysteries that still kind of float around and those mysteries are what makes these characters so interesting. Of course, we have seen different versions of Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, and Freddy himself in every game that was released, but as long as they play a large role in the fourth game, I'll be happy. The third game was interesting with only having Springtrap or one animatronic that would pose a threat to you, which he was completely terrifying, I understand that, but having all of the original characters coming back would definitely be a little bit more thrilling for the final chapter of Five Nights at Freddy's. In at number nine, guys, we have got more use of the cameras. The great thing about Five Nights at Freddy's 3 was the camera usage, and I want to see some more of that in play. In Five Nights at Freddy's 1 and 2, you didn't really use the camera a great deal, apart from maybe getting the crap scared out of you from time to time, but once you worked out a set pattern that the animatronics would take, then it was pretty much just checking on the marionette to make sure the wind-up box was all the way to the top, or making sure Foxy didn't pop out a pirate cove and come and scare you. Now, in Five Nights at Freddy's 3, you actually had to pay attention to where Springtrap was, leading him from room to room, making sure he didn't come and grab your booty. However, in Five Nights at Freddy's 4, I want to see some more usage of this because looking at the cameras it builds tension not knowing where your enemy is going to be next or not knowing where your enemy is in general was amazing and that was one of the best parts about Five Nights at Freddy's 3 when Springtrap would hide in the corner and, and you were like is that Springtrap is he in another room has he just disappeared and the whole tension the whole spookiness and the the, the atmosphere was just so much more intense and I want to see this brought back for Five Nights at Freddy's 4 at number 8 would be unique screams and more death animations for each of the animatronics. I know that giving all of these animatronics multiple death animations would probably be overkill, but since it is the final game, why not go all out? In the previous games, some of these characters only come from one side or just flat out jump in your face. All of these terrifying Satan Chuck E. Cheese thingies pop out at you at any given direction, including behind you. But we'll talk more about that later. If they do come from different directions, that's a new animation. One thing I hope Scott does improve on are the death animations. Springtrap was terrifying, but his jump scares were probably the least scariest once you got used to it. Moving on to the screaming, Raz and I think it would be really cool if all the characters had their own unique scream. Again, that's a lot to add, but it will increase in the character's uniqueness and it will be less repetitive. If Five Nights at Freddy's 4 can beat the original scream from the first game, I will be extremely impressed. In at number 7, guys, we have the return of the mini games, one of my favorite elements of Scott's games is the devices he uses to tell the story, the hidden parts of the lore that you don't necessarily get from the phone guy. We still don't know who has done the bite of 87, we still don't know who the purple man is, and we still, there's still some questions about over the phone guy, whether he's actually good, whether he helps you, and what has actually happened to him, did he really fake his death? And these mini games returning for Five Nights at Freddy's 4 might actually solve some of these questions. Taking our number six spot is including the ultimate custom night challenge mode. As the finale of the Five Nights at Freddy's series, imagine facing every single animatronic, every single form, every single hallucination, everything that's ever been in a Five Nights at Freddy's game. It would be a chaotic masterpiece. But imagine how satisfying it would feel to complete a night facing all of them. Even though the game only came out last year, it would kind of feel nostalgic. Seeing the animatronic style from the first game, the withered, the toy versions, the phantoms, it would be crazy. But it will prove a challenge to a lot of the hardcore fans of the game. A lot of the previous challenges are starting to get easy for people. You know it's good if you want to catch your computer on fire with fear and rage. It's perfect. I know I'll definitely rage, especially if they added a mechanic like that stupid music box. I hate that puppet. 
In at number five, guys, we've got subtle animations in the camera. Now, what I mean by subtle animations is when you look through the cameras and you see one of the animatronics, maybe the animatronic moves its head to the side, or maybe its arm moves, something, a very, very slight movement that just gets you on the edge of your seat, that gets your jimmies a little bit rustled, maybe, maybe it gets your heckles up, your, your goosebumps start to uh, protrude through your skin. It's just that little just that little sign that there is life behind the animatronic and it is coming to get you. It is just a fantastic device. I remember he, in Five Nights at Freddy's 1, when Scott had, I think it was I think it was Chica on one of the cameras, Chica and Bonnie, I'm sure, they would move slightly and you'd got that, that garbled, like, that, the garbled noise in the background and the, the image would flicker on the camera slightly. That was amazing. I absolutely loved seeing that. It just made it just made it all so much scarier to look through the cameras. At our number four spot, we're hoping for a new game mode or a new game mechanic. We have three in mind. A quick turn or being able to face behind you, which would be freaking terrifying. A free roaming mode or a co-op multiplayer mode. All of them sound really fun and really favorable, but the free roaming 3D movement mode is probably the least likely to happen, but you never know. Taking away the charm that made Five Nights at Freddy's so big would be a little strange though. The point of the game is to feel tension because you're stuck in one room and you can't do anything about it. It's simple but it stays scary and being able to move freely would kind of defeat the entire purpose of what the games are known for. But the idea is still pretty cool to think about and actually being able to run and hide from the animatronics till morning sounds extremely terrifying. Combining Outlast and Five Nights at Freddy's. I ain't ever leaving my house, I'm just gonna get a gun, just get me some salt, I don't even freaking know if this game is gonna freaking screw us up. The next one is being able to look behind you. We think that that is simple enough to be added, but one of the most terrifying sensations is to feel like something or someone is behind you. Mixing that with Five Nights at Freddy's would be brutal. And lastly would be the multiplayer mode, because having a buddy makes everything better. Because challenges are always nice, and being able to compete with people online or with your buddies online and it sounds so lovely until Foxy comes around and chews on our faces and then everything else explodes and then we die and then it sounds like a lovely morning. In at number three guys we have got who was the purple man and what was his motivation for killing those poor sweet innocent little children. There are still so many questions surrounding the purple man. There are so many mysteries surrounding why he killed these children. Did he enjoy doing it? Did he get a thrill out of killing these children or was he perhaps perhaps there was a supernatural element influencing this poor man to go around killing these children. Maybe he just hated them. Maybe he was working at this pizzeria for so long the kids just got in his way, just kept annoying him and he was like, hey here, children, have a free bit of cake, knife to the face. Maybe that was it. Maybe it was just revenge on the company. Maybe he wanted to bring them down. There are so many mysteries. The Purple Man is a murderous enigma. We need to know more about him. And hopefully, Five Nights at Freddy's 4, the final chapter, will answer all the questions surrounding the Purple Man. Moving on to number two, we are hoping for that evil, terrible fan to come clean about the cruel deeds it has committed. I'm just kidding. Our real hope is finding out what really happened to the phone guy. We do not know if he is the purple guy or not, which complicates things, and we honestly don't even know who he is. We just know that he's some sort of employee that used to work in the business. There is no way that he is innocent. He just sounds so suspicious, and we need answers. This is the final Five Nights at Freddy's game, and of course, having a little bit of mystery floating around after this game is released is to be expected and that's the charm of these games or he could actually be a good man and actually really trying to help us we really don't know and i must know in at number one guys we have got story completion five nights at freddy's four the final chapter is going to be the last game sadly of this fantastic series and there are still so many unanswered questions we don't know who the victim of the bite of 87 is we don't even know who caused the bite of 87 which animatronic we don't know much about the night guards we play as. We don't know about the overheads and of the Fazbear Company. There are still so many unanswered questions I could go on for days. That's what makes this lore so damn fantastic. However, 
We need some answers. If this is truly the final game, then hopefully Scott is going to answer these important questions. I would still like a sexy little bit of mystery in there, something to intrigue us and keep us talking for years to come over a couple of the issues. However, most of the story needs to be cleared up, and I think that's what Scott wants to do. In my opinion, Scott wants to finish the game, his finish his series in the way that he wants to complete the story before handing it over to Warner Brothers to do their movie thing with, and I think this is a, a, a wise decision decision on his part. So there you have it ladies and gentlemen that's been our top 10 hopes and wishes for Five Nights at Freddy's 4. Let us know down in the comment section below what you thought of this top 10 and maybe there is a suggestion you would like added in that we didn't mention today. A massive thank you to Tricky Wee for coming over today. It has been a pleasure working with you. We had so much fun developing this list and making this video. So make sure you go and check out her channel. She has fantastic content over there including songs and Pokemon content as well if you want to go and check that out. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you guys next time. Bye bye. And uh, yes, if you enjoyed today's video, then hit that like button. It really, really is appreciated. And I'm sure we'll see you all soon for some more Five Nights at Freddy's 4 information, speculation, and top 10 videos. I've been Razbowski. You've been the beautiful bastards, as always, for watching. And I love each and every single one of you. Goodbye!